this computer. Okay, so yeah, just want uh, this is uh, my name is Dale Sheldon. Um, just want to welcome everyone to our meeting of June fourth, twenty twenty three of Sheldon Genealogy. Uh, this is our first, the first time we're recording one of these uh, meetings, but we decided that we wanted to try to start doing this because we end up going into these fascinating conversations. And then they get lost and other people, you know, miss it if they weren't able to come that week. Uh, so that's what we're we're going to give this a shot and see how it goes and put these on our YouTube channel. So, um, but Kelly, you were just saying that that George is going to be coming in. Well, in I think minute. he's going to attempt to. We've been um, uh, <clears throat> Sue and I have been um, following him around the uh, Gettysburg uh, battlefield uh, since uh, what would be 1230 uh, Eastern Standard Time um, today. So it's it's been fun. And that's going to be part of um, a longer video um, on George. Um, George is Great. our webmaster, and he's also published about 20 books. And so I'm I'm kind of interviewing as he's going around the battlefield, and then we'll have more when he's back back at home that's awesome on location Sheldon's on, on location, location. <laughs> and it's a little bit jiggly and the bandwidth yeah. can be a little bit uh rough but it's re it's really been cool I think uh when Sue gets on she'll she'll speak to it as well um and then we did one last Monday uh which has to be edited and whatnot but that was me interviewing Sue's uncle Andy and um just for anybody that's that's interested, uh, that should be a really interesting uh -huh. interview uh, for people to watch because um, he was involved in um, many, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Human rights, civil rights cases. Mm. Um, yeah. So anyway. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, while we the training, oh. is today the training? I mean, every day is going to be kind of the training, I, I thought, because we'll have our, our subject every month, um, which this month is the Sheldon magazine. And so I'll share my screen in later on, probably after George is done, since he's coming soon um, and show we'll, we'll talk about the magazine, uh, the history of it. And I'll show how uh, to update our database and as part of that, we can then go over our formatting and stuff as well. So then if someone that's already here wants to, um, you know, learn that formatting and join in to update the database, they can, and they can help with the project of transcribing the magazine, which I don't know what percentage of it is already done. I've, you know, hit a good chunk of it, though. All the early generations are done. So I don't know, maybe 10%, and that's probably an over um overestimation i'm not sure but th there's so much it's such a big book so well so, i oh okay. just at, at some t time in the future i, I mean i i'd really like to transcribe but yeah. i don't you know i don't know what you know what the deal is there so sometime in the future i want to well no that's what these meetings are going to do we're going to yeah. talk about how to do it and and then if you want to do it you're 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 welcome to but we can uh, you know, ask any questions that you have, but I'll, I'll show you how to transcribe. We'll give you the access to it and, um, and we can go through that process together. But before we um, start, can we learn what line Mark is from. Yeah. Well, that's what I want to go back to. Cause yeah, we just introduced everyone, but I want to say hello to Mark because he's new with us. So uh, yeah, Mark, could you tell us more? Uh my uncle did a lot of research, and I've got the Sheldon Bible, the copies of it. And it looks like from uh, South Kingston, John Sheldon. Okay. We oh, yes. Hello. We're cousins? <laughs> yes. A lot of us, yeah. <laughs> How come? Okay, I'm on uh, Ancestry. You probably all don't like that. How come there's not one Sheldon on there when it shows your DNA and all the people that are related to you? That have There's not one on there. I don't understand. Yeah, that. I can't but, uh, believe no Sheldons have put their. Uh, well, I, I can hear Oh, that. I'm on there. Are but, you talking about? Are you talking about that you've done the DNA test right. on ancestry? 
and you're yes. not coming up with any Sheldons. No, that's um, normal. Yeah, that's not okay. So, so Dale and I are sixth cousins, once removed. I think maybe Dale is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we I don't. Believe so we do not share um, autosomal DNA at so, all. Like not even a single centimorgan that we can find. No. Yeah. So um, what happens with DNA is, and I'll pull out my chart in a second. It's really good for parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents. Back about four to five generations, there's a steep fall off because when, the DNA that you have, you might have a few segments from you have the Y DNA, but the other part, the autosomal DNA, you'll have bits and pieces of your Sheldon ancestors going way back. Right. But the, the bits and pieces that you inherit and Dale inherits and I inherit are different. And so, and they get smaller over time through all these generations. So I may match another Sheldon, but... I won't match most of them going back as we get back to mm -hmm. about fourth cousins, fifth cousins, sixth cousins. Let me pull it up. I have a chart. Up. If, if we say it another way too, like you're getting half your DNA from each parent, right? Each either. of them get half from each of their right. parents. So you're getting 25% approximately right. from each of your grandparents. Gotcha. But then, it, but it's not always the same. So um, like you got 50% from your, from your mother, right. but of her parents, you might've gotten like 40% of one grandparent and 60% of another. Okay. Um, and then it's not any specific part of the sequence either. So as like she was saying, it's getting smaller and smaller with every generation and then a, a very specific part of it. So you and I might both have. Uh, a little sequence of our common Sheldon ancestor back eight generations, but it might be a different part of the sequence, so they don't match up. Um, but how do now, you get that? how do you? How, is there a way to match other? I mean, is there uh, other tests or anything? Well, that's the Y DNA. That's your man DNA. Yeah. So oh, okay. since Mark, since you and I are both descended from John Sheldon of South Kingston, and we both have the name Sheldon. Right. We most likely our Y DNA, which is only passed from father to son, and it doesn't mutate very much, should match. Okay. You and I should have a near perfect Y DNA match to each other. And, and you've picked the perfect time because I think uh, family tree DNA, if it's not already running, has a, a special on their Y37. And that's what you would do to match up with other Sheldons like Dale. If you took that test, assuming that all your Sheldons in in your line um, behaved themselves, uh, you would not <laughs> jail. <laughs> I had a big scare when I took my test because when it first came in, I didn't match any of the South Kingston Sheldons. And then, but Kelly thankfully looked at it because she's our DNA expert. She looked at it and realized this one section was completely off and all the others were perfect and she had them rerun it and they had made an error on their end um, which where, where happens you... so rarely so I mean, rare it's the only it's the only time it's ever happened on a Y dna that i know of but it did happen and it was just because i had so much much experience and i all i have this this set of data which I and thankfully, if Kelly hadn't been there, I would still probably be searching to figure out which ancestor had, you know, gone stepping out with somebody else. <laughs> How do you do this test? How is it? Is it? You said it was family search. Family, yeah, tree, DNA. family tree DNA. And here, um, there's we have a uh, chat, and I will put the, it in the chat in a second. Okay. And George and, is joining us right now. Okay. Uh, so but we'll, yeah, she's going to we'll put that link that in the up. chat. We'll take that up in, in a little bit here. You're going to get connected, Mark. All right. That's good. <laughs> hey, Dale. Uh, yep. Dale, what you need to do now is once he gets his video going, click on his picture and then up in uh, the right. I was going to do that. Yeah. To pin him. Spotlight. It says spotlight him to everyone. Yeah. 
All we see is trees. Yeah. And George, is your audio working? I thought that was connecting. Are you with us? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have a bit of a problem over here in Gettysburg, but that's where I happen to be at the moment. Um, I was just stopped from creating any type of YouTube video back in the National Cemetery. So what I wanted to show you, I can't actually show you. Nevertheless, oh. I'm, I am. Uh, I'm, I'll tell you more about it when I have more time to tell you about it. But uh, um, we do have we did get uh, footage or video coverage of what we wanted, which was the most important thing. And I am now outside of the cemetery. I'm right beside the cemetery. And this is the Masonic uh, Memorial that's here. I was talking about that to uh, Sue and uh, Kelly earlier. And this is the monument that sort of tells you everything you need to know about modern day Freemasonry. This is erected by the Pennsylvania Masons. And this is about, depicts the uh, uh, brotherhood of a brother helping a fallen brother. When a brother asks for help, you help that brother. This actually occurred on the battlefield on the third day of the battle. Hmm. Wow. Cool. Very good. So I, that's, that's, I assume you can see it pretty well there. You yeah, know? no, it's a great yeah. picture. That's like the brother against brother type thing. Is it's that a, what you it's not so much a brother. It is brother against brother, but it's also brother helping brother. Which right, is right. A, extremely important part of Freemasonry. Hmm. Um, when, oh, a brother gotcha. asks, when a brother asks for help, you help that brother. And uh, that's what this is about. The, even uh, if they're uh, on the other side. Even if they're on the other side. Gotcha. The, the fall, I, don't, I don't remember who the uh, Union soldier is that's uh, over top of the <laughs> fallen soldier, but the fallen soldier is Confederate uh, General Armistead. Ah. Cool. Wow. And I can walk around and sort of show it to you a little, I think. I can't. Yeah, I sure. have to camera turned around but there you can see it where it says friend uh, friend to friend hmm. yeah can't quite make out the words so much but um it looks like it's a beautiful day oh. is it, it is which is one of the reasons i came over here today is because it is such a great day yeah and i knew we could get some pretty good pictures out of it oh, i was actually with my honor to be here as one of the masons that helped rededicate this memorial Oh, wow. George? Yes. Wow. Do you have any sense of how many graves there are in Gettysburg off the top of your head? <laughs> well, um, I do know the number. I think the, the Na National Cemetery that I was just kicked out of for filming or videoing, um, I think there's 3,800 in there. Okay. And a um, certain amount are unknown. We have a lot of that now on video, which we're working on. <clears throat> getting a uh, video put together about Sheldon's at Gettysburg. Mm. I don't think I'm giving away a secret by telling that. No, <laughs> yeah. no, I, I already talked about it. And um... I have no idea what you said, because I, again, I stopped recording up there and that's, I wanted to get out of the park before I came back on. Very good. And this, this is uh, George's book. Oh, hold on. I'm, I'm, um, I'm sharing. Uh... One second. Let me switch over to you. Oh, that's okay. Oh, there we go. We can see both of you now. So there, there is the book that George wrote, and, oh, wow. and the video um, that that he shot today that we're working on um, is going to to tell you not just about his writing of the book, but also the Sheldon connections to Gettysburg that he did not know when he wrote this book. Wow! Wow! It's yeah, so that's coming. And then July is going to be our Civil War month, too. So we'll focus on Civil War records. And then yeah, July, July is the uh, anniversary, right, George? Right. 160 years ago, uh, this July. And I'm just looking from up here at this vantage point. We're looking down toward, you can't see because of the trees and stuff that's there. But that is the town of Gettysburg, at least mm. a little piece of it that you can see. Do you know... Um, and this was a question I wondered when I was at Normandy a few, couple of years ago as well for the unknown, the unidentified soldiers. Do you know if there's any kind of a, yes. a, a program to dig yes. them up and uh, DNA test? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, CC Moore is involved um, in, in, I, I don't know if it's over there, but I know she is, is involved in some sort of organization um, that 
tries to identify the remains via DNA. Yeah, especially oh, now, it should it be so much easier now than yeah. in the past. How many Sheldons are you? Did you discover, um, George? At Gettysburg. Well, yeah, at Gettysburg. The one that's buried here is George W. Sheldon. And of course, that's what caught my original attention to him some time ago, because that's also my grandfather, my great grandfather's name. That's the Sheldon that brought me to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, <clears throat> brought my line to Lancaster County as wow. George W. Sheldon. So I knew about I knew about him being buried, but I didn't know his whole story. Uh, we know much more about his story now. We don't know everything. Um, I think uh, initially Kelly and I were working on it a little bit yesterday and Kelly sort of uh, seems to be thinking, uh, right, Kelly, that it uh, looks like he's an Isaac? Yes, yes. In fact, I was going to suggest if if you were going to work on the Sheldon magazine um, mm -hmm. I, and if you want to do something around it is I think you have uh, George's uh grandfather in there um if i've got it right and whether we could connect uh george um into that uh that person or not but anyway tentatively i have the line as uh george w going back his father being william and i think that william is in the tree and then he's the son of chauncey sheldon and this oh, okay. should be of interest because Chauncey lived in Rupert, Vermont. And then that goes back to John of uh, Suffield, Connecticut. And then Thomas, Thomas, Isaac, Isaac. What you're yeah, looking at Chauncey. now is the National Soldier Cemetery. Mm. You can see I'm, I'm on this side of the wall. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> so are those still um, soldiers from the battle or these are later? These, I believe, where I'm standing right now are later, but the ones that we took the pictures of, they are from the battle. In the other video. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which you will, you will see some, you will see footage of that because we got quite a bit of it. Yeah. It's really cool. And George tells us all sorts of historical information as he's, walking about so it's pretty cool now mm. i've got to end because there's my entrance back into the park and they're waiting for me and if i don't i'm going to need 500 dollars bail money <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right well, that is all but that's the that's the top secret of what's going on over here all right today. like the sunglasses okay. oh, bye, thanks. George. all right see you. thank you george all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. george Okay. So if you look for Chauncey in the um in your existing database, uh I'm I'm guessing that's where where Chauncey has a son William that's listed as being born in like 1813. <clears throat> and I think that's uh George W. Sheldon. Uh, who died in um, Gettysburg. I think that's his father. Mm. Okay. Um, and whether we, I mean, at some point, whether it's today or some other day, it, it um, Stu was suggesting that we could use that as a research thing because yeah. um, it's, it was, it's not straightforward <clears throat> and there's, there's not a lot about him um, and I, I went through a couple of wrong rabbit holes before I settled on. I think that might be the connection. So hmm. anyway, we can go back to uh, the family tree DNA. Did you uh, click Mark on the uh, chat box? Because there's the um, uh, information. There. Oh, okay. All right. There's also, Mark, a, a Sheldon... Um, project on their group project so they have okay. surname yeah. and you yeah can... that's what i gave him so, okay. so it is a link to the the um sheldon project and there's a i think there's a button on there that says join 
and you can join the project and then you can order a kit. Okay. And, uh, go from it. there. And uh, we have, gosh, how many testers do we have on there? Kelly, it's over a hundred, right? Oh yeah, a like lot well more over. than a hundred. Um, let me see. Although a lot of them, I mean, there's quite a few that aren't named Sheldon, but let me check on it for you, just a second. Well, oh, that's true. I'm not really counting those, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try to get you to how many Y DNA kits we have there. Again, some of those aren't gonna be Sheldon's, but mm -hmm. um, let's see. So, so Mark, there's several kits and the one that tests for 37 markers is the least expensive. Okay. You can and go that, higher. <laughs> yeah, that will get you started. What if you go to the higher one? I mean, what's it going to do? Take me back to England or what? I don't. <laughs> it's, it's it's more detailed, which is good. I mean, if you can go higher, go higher. But um, I like I started with the lowest one, and over time, I just kept upgrading it to now I have okay. the highest one. So it's the, just the, the bottom one. That I would go for a Y thirty seven unless you have a few hundred dollars that you're willing to spend on it, and then I <laughs> yeah. would suggest bypass the Y thirty seven and go for the big Y. It is generally on sale. It's what is it? Oh, it's it's pricey. So well, the big anyway. one, the big one is pricey. Yeah, yeah, I'll decide. I you know what it what it does. What the big Y does is it allows more definition um that's a whole other conversation mm. more uh, mark, it's more refined yes uh, yeah it's more refined yeah mark have we done your um line before already like we have i, I know there's several marks so i don't know if i've talked to you yet and got yeah, you i sent you i sent you a, a copy of the picture of that bible sheldon bible Start oh with yes, yes. Joseph okay. And Jemima Carr, and then you, and then I showed you the the part that my uncle went back further, and he had a couple mistakes in there, and I uh, was correcting those. Yeah. Okay. I know who who you are now. Perfect. Yeah. We have we have like five marks, I think. Surprisingly, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's why if if you do order a kit, Mark. Put in at least your middle initial, if not your middle name, okay. because um otherwise it's impossible for me to know who's who gotcha yeah All right. and we have somebody new hello emily oh, hey, hi hi how are you how are, how are you doing good how are you another oh, sheldon I'm, I'm <laughs> yes another sheldon yes uh, do you see. want to tell us just, a little bit uh, more just, about sorry real quick before we move on um i just wanted to let mark know that um, I did finish adding your line, including that that uh, Bible page with all mm -hmm. the information to our database. So that's okay. All, right. all in there now. All right, perfect. Yeah, you and, said, uh, can I just ask you this? You, uh, I know that was he had the uh, Joseph Sheldon's wife wrong. He had Lydia Earl, and you said it was Ruth Burdick, right? Burdick. Correct. Yeah. And then the other one was. Uh, John Sheldon, was at, his father was actually Isaac Windsor Sheldon, right? Isaac Sheldon of Windsor, Connecticut. Oh, okay, of Windsor. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right, yeah, and that was everything else you said was looked all right. Um, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, we can look more in that. In, um, okay. Because this family that we're going to look at in a minute after we talk with Emily is um, another branch of that same oh, really? family. Yeah, so we can look at that in more detail. But uh, Emily, hello. You're you're also new. Please introduce yourself. How are you doing? Well, I'm Emily Sheldon. Um, live in California, and I <laughs> sort of just for myself just kind of gotten into this. My dad and grandfather did quite a bit of work. Actually, a great aunt did too. Mm -hmm. And I have a tree that goes back into uh, to England. But I'm I don't have any details about any of the people or other than my like my grandfather and great grandfather. But um, it, as it goes back, it gets very foggy. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of interested. I'm really hoping I can get to the meeting in Fort Wayne and get some mm -hmm. advice and information 
it's um <laughs> People. To be uh, just to clarify for you real quick, because the, the Fort Wayne meeting is with the Sheldon Family Association. Um, mm -hmm. and they they're a separate organization from us. We're both. Oh, we're, OK. We're two separate, which is fine. Uh, and a lot of people here are members of the SFA, um, but we're, we're two separate um, nonprofit corporations. So, yeah, you know, go to their reunion and and ask them. But we're also we meet every week and we're happy to answer questions oh. and and help you We're we really focus on the research and the, uh, uh, you know, the documentation. We're trying to clear a yeah. lot of that fog. So. That's that's kind of what I need. I mean, I have names. My grandfather was Benjamin Cushing. Um, Great grandfather was Aiken Cushing, I think Aiken C, and uh, goes on from there. Um, but um, so are you? A, are you a Sheldon? A Sheldon by birth. Birth. Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> and so, so the Benjamin or uh, Cushing. Benjamin Sheldon. Cushing Sheldon. It was okay. my grandfather. Okay. My father was David Butterfield. That was his mother's maiden name. Okay. And yeah, we go back. Uh, the family goes back to New England, and okay, England which, on several lines. Okay. That the the Sheldon line that you believe goes back to England. Which was the first in this country? You I know think of. it's one of the Isaacs. Oh, okay. As, okay. As I had a I feeling it was, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> We're going to work gonna, on that. <laughs> just going to help Mark as well, because he's basically another part of that same family. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah. Um, and so are Kelly and, and Sissy and, and I. And oh, I think uh, <laughs> Carol is from part of hers. Neil is not. But um, there are a lot of old trees out there that have um, information that seemed right at the time, to the best of their knowledge at that time. And it showed that uh, an Isaac Sheldon born in in Derby, England in 1629, and they believe that he was um, the progenitor of a, a line of the Isaac family. Um, that set up the same in Connecticut. Yeah, but we've since found out that that was incorrect. So uh, the Isaac, that boy back in England in, in Derby, we have since uh, Trace, where he actually went to Manchester, had a completely different family, and we've we found where he went. Um, what actually happened here in in the colonies was there was an earlier Isaac. We don't have a birth date for him. It was probably around fifteen oh five or so. Um, sixteen. Dar sorry, sixteen oh five. Yeah. Correct. Sorry, sixteen oh five. He would have had, we believe, two sons. The first was. Isaac born 1629, which is who I was just talking uh -huh. about. Um, and then a, a son, John, born about 1630. And the reason why we believe that is the Y DNA that we were just talking about with Mark of the descendants of those two gentlemen are a perfect match to each other. So they, they must be related and um, looking at how closely they match to each other the they should connect right around that time frame um so that and there's also the letter letter references to the isaac um in northampton massachusetts having a brother in rhode island so it all fits very well um so that's that is now the line. So now it's the the first one for you would then be Isaac, born about sixteen oh five, somewhere in England. We don't know where yet. We're working on that. Um, and then son Isaac, born sixteen twenty nine, sounds like it's your line, Emily. And son John, born sixteen thirty, is Mark and I's ancestor. Mm -hmm. I think I have and um, mine. Yeah, and Kelly's, mine. yeah, and mine. <laughs> A bunch of people. <laughs> Many children. And Carol's Many descended from both later. of them. Oh, my, so family, lots of children. oh my goodness. One of the families I've traced so far, um, I think actually in the Butterfield line, has 14 children. Yeah. One of whom yeah. has a death, very early death date. And I'm sure that was common. 
a it's very amazing that, yeah. 14, that 13 or 14 would survive. I mean, that's yes, incredible. yeah, yes. But what okay, they'll will have them, them, and then one of them will die, and they'll name it the same thing. Like, that's always, there's Caleb, and then there's another Caleb. And that's hey, right. We came up with a good name, and we want to use it. All right. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> Isaac, that Isaac born 1629, he had 14 children. Oh, my that gosh. That all survived, I think. Um, mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 14. Uh, three of them with his first, or 13 of them with his first wife and one with his second wife. Well, let me ask you this. Um, I have both ancestry and um, what's the other one? Family search. Uh, yeah. Um, mm. Any recommendations? Any preferences? Uh, I, I prefer ancestry personally. Um, and ancestry is what we use as Sheldon genealogy. That's where our primary database Okay. It's located and it is public, so you can see it for free. It's not behind, like, you don't have to be a member, pay for any dues or anything. Um, yeah, maybe maybe at this point you can show um, uh, TNG, um, you know, show off on, on how to use our tree. And, and mm -hmm. you might even just show, here's the tree on Ancestry. And here's what it looks like when it comes into TNG. Sure. Yeah, I could do that. Um, yeah, that'd be interesting. Let me see here. Share my screen and one second, make this big. Um, I have a, a wide, extra wide screen here, so I'm not sure how this will come out. Um, but... So this is our database on Ancestry.com. The, the name of the database it is sheldongenealogy.org tree. Okay. So it's very clear <laughs> that it's us. Um, this is uh, the Isaac that we were just talking about mm -hmm. and how he has a father Isaac. I put 1610 here. We have no idea when he was born. This is just a general um, thing there. And... So Isaac, uh, yeah, he married the two times with his 14 Oh, Mahitable. Children. My mother, always, Mahitable my mother Gun, loved that name. Mahitable Gun Ensign, I think it was. Yeah. Yes. M M Gun was her maiden name. Then she married a Mr. Ensign. Her story is incredible. I've been, I, I keep wanting to go back to finish writing a blog article on her, a blog post. Um she married, I think it was John Edward Ensign. I can't remember what his first name was, but a Mr. Ensign. They had some children. He then fell in love with some other woman and ran off with her. Oh, yes. Yeah, um, sure. And Ben, we're talking about like the 17th century. You know, mm -hmm. this is early on. Um, hey, and people they, are people. Oh, of course. Yeah. But he just, just, it was, you know, they were kind of Puritans, at least. Anyway. Um, they they ran off, uh, left her with her children um, alone, and Mahitable managed to, I don't know if it was the first, I don't think it was the first divorce in the colonies, um, but it was certainly an early one uh, that she managed to get a, a favor, favorable outcome from that. And he was required to hand over his property to her that he had owned with her um in the support of her children and then a after isaac's first wife passed away um he remarried to mehitable to a divorced woman which was not considered at the time uh something that you really do so i think that speaks very well of isaac you know that women at that time didn't have much autonomy it would have been extremely difficult for her to take care of herself with her children um alone she would have had some ability but it would have been extremely difficult the children were still very young so it wasn't like she had older sons that could run a farm for her um so for isaac to have married her and taken on that responsibility okay. and children i think speaks a lot about him as well um and they had an additional son who has a ton of descendants um uh so yeah this is what uh, this is what it looks like in ancestry 
Um, that was the tree I was just looking at. This is the personal page for him with our the documentation that we have for him. I think we mm -hmm. actually have we have more that needs to be fleshed out and added to this, but this is just a a basic for now. Um, you can see his brother John, who is our ancestor as well. Oh, we're calling what I've got people waiting, joining. I am going to leave for a minute and look at my tree and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't coming back in again. Yeah. I think he's having trouble because he's tried a couple of times here. I keep admitting him. I'll go to our website while she's doing that. Did we lose Emily completely? Yeah. She so said she back in. <clears throat> okay um i can come back to this when she comes back and show her how to get into this okay tree George, uh, well, can you can you hear us can you hear me yes yep. greetings are you I made you're in your car the, <laughs> i made it back to the car um i don't want to interrupt your meeting but I just thought if you wanted to see downtown Gettysburg, saying I'm going to drive through it, I would show it to you. All right. Sure. But that's totally up to you guys. Whether you, I, I don't, again, I don't know what you're doing because I just joined. Uh, we were just waiting up. for Emily to come back. She was checking on her tree. Um, okay. So are you there now or? I am in this, I'm at the cemetery parking lot. And I just a matter of leaving and going downtown. And I was just going to broadcast and let you guys see. Okay. Kelly wanted to see the Letterman camp, and we'll go. We'll go past that, Kelly. Oh, all right. That's that would be good. And you can. Uh, I'm going to stop can, sharing my screen then, and then when Emily comes back, we can go back to this. Okay. Um, what are, you can and you can kick me out too because I'm not going to keep driving. You know, with this on then. Well, George, do you wanna do you wanna wait a second and uh, Sue and I could go back on our other uh, <laughs> other? I don't care. That has my phone so messed up trying to get back and forth between those two Zoom things. I just, I must have like thirty two Zoom windows open. <laughs> um, That's a whatever, mess. Whatever you want to do. And so, no, it's whatever you want to do. I'm I'm only sitting in the parking lot of a cemetery. <laughs> ready to drive through town and if you wanted to see the town i mean i thought i'd show it to you that's all i don't want to interrupt you though if you're doing something okay else. well while you're going to the town uh, so go ahead and let us know when you're there um and we're waiting for emily and in the meantime um i just wanted to go back to mark and see if he had any other questions or something that we can um just why well, is there two spellings d-e-n -E ah. <laughs> <laughs> just because no one cared you know, know what it was? Mine looks like it's D E N more than it's D O N, but you see them both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all the families keep going back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I uh, most, a lot of people weren't um, particularly literate, but even besides, even if they were literate, there was no um, standardized, standardized spelling of English at all uh, until. The first dictionary, which wasn't in 1789, or I can't remember the year that the first one came out. Hmm. Um, and that's just for normal, you know, regular words, not even right. names. Um, so right. people just spelled it however they thought it sounded like. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, I, I was just curious. What yeah. And the, the further back that. in time you go, the, the worse it gets. So I've, I've seen Sheldon spelled, you know, back in the 13th century, S C H. Um, e l d o n n e, huh. you know, all, all kinds of weird or i n g. I've seen that shelding. I n shelding, yeah, that that's a little more rare because it's it sounds well, get, differently, but well, I get called to Sheldon Cooper a lot, so yeah, Sheldon <laughs> Cooper, yeah. Okay, I can see George is on the road. Is there a way to switch to uh him as? this screen yeah i can um let me emily's coming back let me just and then i'll put him as spotlight but is he just I, that's just a bus i don't think he's in town yet he's trying to get out of the parking lot yeah and his cars so, are in his way hey can you guys go over again finding the tree on family on ancestry 
I think I've never actually been on your tree. Yeah, Finding I, it on Ancestry? That's a good question. Let me I'm see. I'm on Ancestry right now. So where do I go to find it? Uh, I can walk you through that. Just do I go on private member trees? No. What do I go no, on? No, uh, it's no. not private. It's a public tree. Okay. Um, There's a, 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 a main page where you can uh, search and you can search for, I'm not on it because I'm actually driving down the highway with George. Um, well, I'm on that. Along, Kelly. I'm on the main page and it gives, you know, your choice of private or public member trees. So do public. Okay. Uh, hold on just a minute. Public photos and scan. Oh, public member trees. Okay. I think I hold see on. where you are. Um, I'm wondering if there is... Maybe in the keyword search, let me try this. Um, Sheldon genealogy.org. What if I want trees? No, that I did not work. Um, I'm under trees, that's just my trees. Uh, home, go back to home. Uh, okay, Sue is suggesting we let George talk now. Yep, yeah. sure, is sure. he there though? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's uh, videoing. Are you where you wanted to show us, George? Yeah, I'm in downtown, beautiful downtown uh, Gettysburg. As a matter of fact, this is the tourist area, the tourist part of it. Not that the whole town's sort of not tourist town, but you're right in, uh, getting into the heart of the the uh, historic area. Um, I'm going to sort of try to move the camera just a little bit as I get down here to this intersection. Directly across the street from this intersection is the Ginny Wade House. That's where she was shot and killed. She was the only civilian killed during the Battle of Gettysburg. Wow. So huh? just, I got to get just past this gas station to see that. Um, but you'll see some of the shops. I assume you're able to see the shops and things that are here. Yeah. I see a lot of your dashboard, though. But yeah, I see the yeah, shops. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Does okay. that help? Does that help? That's oh, that is better. better. Yeah. That's Thank better. you. Okay. Uh, the Ginny Wade House is... Um, let's see where I can find it for but you. But your thumb is right in front of the camera. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to actually spin down there and get it for you. I'm not used to doing this, as you can sort of tell. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You're, you're doing good. Um, but this street that's right here, this is one of the, this is the main street. It's called Baltimore Street. Uh -huh. um, and if you went the way that I'm going to actually turn, I'm going to turn right so I can take you past the Ginny Wade house so you can see it, because that's a a, a note of interest, if you will. But um, this street was a huge battle street. And there's actually houses, I don't know that I, with me driving that I'll be able to show it to you, but there's houses down here that have bullet holes yet in them. Uh, one of them is an ice cream shop that has the shutters and the shutters actually have the bullet holes still in it. Wow. Which is really something you think that shutters last 160 years, they knew how to make them. Yeah. It's it also looks the like area where they have they do a certain amount of ghost tours here if you're into that kind of thing. Those and are it is fine. illegal illegal to hunt ghosts in a national park. Yeah. <laughs> they don't allow that. They don't allow ghost hunting there at the cemetery. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know why, but they do not allow ghost hunting in the national park. The other thing that I can tell you about it is sometime I'll have to tell you my ghost hunting story here in Gettysburg because I kept getting asked a lot of questions about it. And um, um, I actually did one of those and I'll have to tell you the results. There's the Ginny Wade house right there. Mm -hmm. And there's her monument. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's got a statue okay. right in front. Now I'm going to get turned around here in the parking lot and then get back out of here. Um, but the other thing that I'm going to take you to, or at least attempt to, is uh, as we go past it, um, I mentioned in the earlier video today that the most probably the most famous Sheldon that lived here was Mamie Sheldon, and I'm going to go past the church where him or where her and Dwight um, uh, frequented <clears throat> when they lived that, here. He's talking about Eisenhower's, by the way, for yeah, the Eisenhower's. Right? Yeah, oh, right. right. Mamie Eisen, Mamie, Mamie and Eisenhower Dwight. was a Sheldon. Mamie, I think uh, if I remember right, Dowd was the person she married, or that yes. the Sheldon married a Dowd, if I remember yeah. right. Yeah. But you'll see, like, this is sort of like a little bit of a commercial area. And now I'm just heading back. I'm on Baltimore Street again and just heading north up to this, what they call the diamond, but 
everybody else would call it a square. <laughs> yeah, I live it's, like 30 miles. It's not miles a very big town. It's, it's rather small. It's only about four blocks from each direction from the square. Did you live in Western Maryland, um, Mark? I, well, I lived in and there's That's wow. the building that has the bullet holes in it right there. Where they, they're mm. standing and getting the ice cream. Gotcha. Yeah, I lived in Frederick. It was right down 15. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I right. love Frederick. And, and that house right there, um, right there, the one with the bunning on, uh, mm -hmm. Kelly, that's the one that uh, I wrote an awful lot about with uh, Tilly, uh, Tilly Pierce. Okay. And we'll soon be in beautiful downtown, town, uh, beautiful downtown uh, Gettysburg, if we're not there now. This church right here that I'm just pointing at, that's the that's the Eisenhower Church. Mm. I'm right there. And mm. there's a pew in there marked where they, they sat. And I don't know if you can see it yet, but I'm almost at the square. That's a cool building. Is that another church on yeah. the left? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting cupola or something. Yeah. Well, that one, that right there, if that's the one you're talking about that I'm sort of pointing at, that's the yeah. county courthouse. Ah, oh, courthouse. okay. This is Adams County, named after the president. Mm -hmm. it was, if I remember right, in 1800, uh, they cut <clears> it off of York County. And by the way, when I turn here, I'm going to be just making a sharp right. The building you're going to see to your right, and I'll try to point to it, that's the building where uh, Lincoln stayed when he came to give the address. Oh, cool. Mm. So Gettysburg is the county seat of Adams County? Gettysburg is the county seat of Adams County. I didn't realize that. I thought, I don't know why, I thought it was a much smaller town for some reason. It's like I said, it's only, I don't know if it's how long it seems because you're watch, sitting there watching the video and of course, it's bumper to bumper, and you know we have to yield right away to all the tourists and right. our tourists and stuff here. But it's only I've only went four blocks so far. That mm -hmm. building right there, the red building, that's the place that Lincoln stayed. Hmm. Wow. I mean, it could be small, like mileage wise, but it it feels built up and busy and I, I, yeah. My guess is, and I'm not exactly sure, but my guess is there's not more than about ten thousand citizens right in the town. Hmm. Huh. Not a big, it's not a big town at all. These buildings that are here, a lot of these are historic buildings that they were with, they were here. They, all, they'll, they have yeah. little plaques on them. I'm not going to be able to get a take your thumb off. Off the to. <laughs> we got your finger take again. The, yeah. Take I'm your sorry. finger off the lens. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just wanted you to see my thumb. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very historic thumb. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, it is. It's a Sheldon thumb. It has to be a good thumb. <laughs> yeah. And this road that I'm on right now is called York Road, and this takes you over to York County, um, next major city away from here. Uh, now we're we're headed towards Letterman Camp. Camp Letterman is going to be down here, Kelly. You'll, like I said, there'll be the only thing that I can really show you that exists of Camp Letterman is a marker that they got up. It's a real shame as to what they did. And when you see it, um, you'll see what I mean as far as like the commercialization of it. It's really sad. Kelly, is that the same Letterman as, as San Francisco? Yep, that is the same, one in the same. And and what I found out from reading George's book is that Jonathan Letterman um for which Letterman General Hospital in San Francisco at the Presidio is uh, named for. He died in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And when I interview George, I'm going to have him tell us uh, a little bit more about it when he's back home. Um, but anyway, Letterman General Hospital is very important in my family because my grandparents um, met and wet uh, and later married in San Francisco. Mm -hmm both at Letterman General Hospital. He has an army medic during World War I and she has a um, army student nurse. Kelly, I'm mm -hmm. showing that railroad track. Of course, that was the major thing they used to get rebuilt to get the injured in and out of uh, Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. right and, there. and and this mm -hmm. is what, Kelly, this is what's left of Camp Letterman where I'm 
showing you right now. To the, I'm sort of pointing the camera a little bit to the right, hopefully without mm -hmm. my thumb. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a mall or something now. Yeah, it's, all, it's just commercial buildings right and left. Yeah. Hmm. It's a shame that, I mean, I'm sure there's human remains back in these woods and back in this ground and stuff because of the amount of people that the, the soldiers that right. died there. Hmm. One of the things the Confederates did is they just abandoned their wounded and left them in Gettysburg, knowing that they'd be hmm. taken care of. Hmm. Which is sort of sad. <clears throat> Yeah. Not like the Trojan War. Yeah. I mean, they didn't even bother feeding their wounded, which is really telling in a way, too. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, the Confederate Army was, was not, um, when I did my study of my Confederate and my Union soldiers, um, they had a completely different experience of war, one had to to provide their own, all their gear, their equipment. Yeah. Uh -huh. They were they were starving to death. Um, and Kelly, um, there's a McDonald's, and I think I can get over. But here's the marker. This is all that exists as far as Camp Letterman. Uh -huh. Oh, it's the marker right there. Yeah, uh -huh. that, that's the one I told you. I have a picture in the book about, but that's yeah. it. And that's what's wow. left of Camp Letterman. The fields mm. here. Yeah. Yeah. Something's like, for sale. Something's for sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you could buy that lot and put up another building, another commercial building here. Wow. Wow. All right. That's All it. All right. Thank you, Thank George. Thank you, George. I'm at the edge. I don't know how to. Can you just disconnect me or let's see if I can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can at least mute you and then. Uh, All right. <laughs> and I'll, I'll. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. I'll let you get back to your meeting. Thank you. Thanks for letting me interrupt. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Uh, actually, I can't figure out how to. Uh... Got to be a way to boot me out of there. <laughs> yeah, there you are again. <laughs> yeah. Just what you need to see more of me. <laughs> well, you could probably take him off the main. No, I'm trying to even do that. Yeah. Oh. Um. I lost, there was a, a thing before and it's missing now. Hmm. There we go. Okay, he figured it out. All right. Where were we? You were showing them how to get on to our site. <clears throat> we looked at the uh the ancestry site and then we were showing them how to get on to our site. So oh, I'm right. on I'm on a page that says public member trees. And that's oh, a, wow. it's a search page, right? Yes. Um but it's here, let me share my for, screen again. First a middle name and all this other business. Okay. I mean I suppose you could do something like um this did yeah. not work. I tried this, putting the name of our tree down here. It would be oh. nice if you could search. By tree name. Yeah, and they don't seem to have that option. Um, but maybe if we put in someone that we know. Chauncey is in there, and that's unusual. All right, so you think that C-E-C-Y or C-E-Y? Uh, I think it's C-H-A-U-N-C-E-Y. Yeah, -E -Y. that's what I have. Okay. And Sheldon was an O-N? Um, yeah. All right, let me see what it's... Um. <sighs> Let's see. Chauncey Washburn, adopted name Sheldon. William Chauncey, found in 13 trees. There's a ton of Chauncey, surprisingly. He should be uh, unfortunately, uh, 1786 is approximate birth date. Chauncey. So if we put in 1786, give or take 10 years, just to be safe. And we get, okay, so Chauncey born 1786 in Rupert. Okay, um, well. There's 190 trees. Oh, that didn't help. So we can't search by the tree name. Well, you know what we we can do is we once we get to the actually, 
if you're in the tree, Dale. Does yeah, it... I mean, I can just send a link, but I was trying to find a way that people could just yeah. find it. But um, I mean, we could always just send it to you as well. Okay. Um, let me go. So this is the tree. Um, let's try. What's it called? It's called Sheldon Genealogy. Dot org tree. Oh, it's got that. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, had I sent you an invite in the past to it? I don't. Think I, I don't. So what I can do it? is we can. Um. Is it under settings? I think so. No. Let's see. Oh, wait, I think it's I have to be manage. signed in. It's under manage. I don't think I can uh, manage it from the account that I'm signed into right now. Okay. Um, right. But I can sign out and I can. Yeah, just whatever. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, so I, whoever wants access to the tree or find um, or at least to be able to see it, let me know. Send me a message. I can send you an invite to it. That's probably going to be the easiest way. Yeah, probably so. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then as the other form of it, so we do all of our, almost all of our editing of the database here in Ancestry. And there's also lots of um, photos and media and stuff attached here that doesn't move over. But so if... So this is a great place to just look at it. However, we also have it on our website. So if you go to sheldongenealogy.org, um, oh, okay. our blog post is here as well, okay. which we have tons of really good articles um, on just different bits of Sheldon-related mm -hmm. history sure. and genealogy. Uh, but also you can, at the top, click on... Or, uh, just hover over a family tree yeah and then search tree and then people and what i like to do is search so since it's almost all sheldon's mm -hmm. i'll search the maiden name of a sheldon wife so like mehitable gun is who i always do for isaac so i'll just yeah. type in gun right and then i'm going to get mehitable it's going to go right to her. Um, so this is what she looks like in our on our website database. And you can see that he's got the Sheldon magazine in the. Uh, yeah, Sheldon, her page yeah. in the Sheldon magazine is already yeah. here. Why don't you show them what that looks like? Yeah, this is the, the very first page of yeah, the magazine, right. um, which she's named as Mrs. Mehetable Ensign on this. Because hmm. that's that was her name when they married. So know? she had she had Timothy, Jonathan, Timothy, and Daniel, but which are which are just which is Jonathan the only one from Isaac? No, she only had Jonathan. She only had Jonathan, yeah. So, so Timothy and oh, so let's let's look at how to read this, first of all. Yeah, good. Okay. Um the Reverend Sheldon, his idea, he thought at that time, and this is wrong in this early in these early years, so you have to be careful with it, but yeah. he thought it started with these three brothers. And note that mm -hmm. there's a question mark next to William. So he didn't even know if this guy existed. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it starts with the three brothers. Isaac one of Dorchester, Massachusetts, is mm -hmm. the same Isaac of Windsor that Isaac born around 1605, 1610 that we were talking about. He right. always believed this person existed. It wasn't until 1926, it was, I think, that people cut this person out of existence because they they thought it didn't make sense because they found a better match for his son, Isaac, um, back in England. So they thought, well, if he's in, you know, related to this other person, if he was the son of Ralph, he can't be the son of Isaac. So they just deleted him. Yeah. Uh, even though there was a document proving his existence, they yeah. deleted him completely. Yeah. We've since brought him back. So now we're like full circle that this is actually correct 
now. Um, Dorchester. This is the who's father. Not, yeah. Yeah. Who's his father? Is it Samuel? Oh, we don't know who his father was. Okay. We have no idea. Um, all we know is he was born. A, any, we don't know when he was born, but it might have been around 1605 to 1610, um, just as a guess because his son, Isaac, was born in 1629. So just as an estimate. There's um, John Sarah. That's my line. Right there, right? And they show him as Dorchester Company because that was where his group that he came over with would have originally landed that Dorchester company then immediately moved to what is now uh, the Windsor colony or what was even then actually the Windsor colony. Um, and then we believe he died around 1656 okay. um, because, he, and well, let me show you how to read this first of all. So we have the three brothers, they're Isaac one, John number two, William number three. And next to them, it shows one right here this means that you'll find this child as an adult with their family on page one which is the same page that we're on so isaac john and william is isaac john and william one two and three. Oh, okay. so now we have isaac senior and it shows that he has a son john number four and isaac number five so this is interesting again because you know, this is this was written back in 1855. He thought even back then that there was an Isaac and a John as two sons of this Isaac. Um, mm -hmm. What he had wrong and understandably is there were several Johns in the colonies that were all the exact same age and living mm -hmm. in the same sh small area. So mm -hmm. he kind of had to just guess which John it was. He had no idea which one it was. Uh, so he picked John of Bilricka, Massachusetts. That we now know is incorrect. Um, mm. Because this John, we have solid documentation as being the son of William uh, of Salem, Massachusetts, and grandson of Godfrey of Maine. So we know it definitely wasn't this one. This line has also dotted out. We have no male descendants living of this line. Yeah. Then there was the John of Providence line, but we have male descendants of that line. Um, and their Y DNA is not a match to Isaac's family. Um, he is a match again to the Godfrey line. So these two Johns, John of Bilricka and John of Providence, Rhode Island, or actually, sorry, this is John of Providence, Rhode Island. Who is that? Number eight. Yeah, it's the same one. Um, are related to each other, but they're not related to these two Isaacs. Mm. That leaves us with this John, John 13, John of South Kingston, Rhode Island, which the Reverend assumed was maybe the son of this William who he didn't even know existed or not. Uh, mm. We have no documentation at all that this William ever existed um, or this Oh, no, I think we do know who this William is, but I can get to that later. Um, so this John then is a match, a DNA match to this Isaac. So we realize, okay, this is the John that's mm. supposed to be here. These are the two brothers. Yeah. Um, and then it keeps going from there. So then John, well, we don't want to look at this one, right? With John 13, um, he's on. he goes on to page one. And they didn't put it here, but Isaac five, he missed the one here. There's a lot of small mistakes like that. But if we look, Isaac five is here. Uh, so John 13 and Isaac five is adults. We know John 13 had a wife, Sarah, because his son, John, when he died later in 1704, in his will, he left, he mentions his honored mother, Sarah. So we know this is, and this is the John 13 line. So these are your ancestors, Mark. Right, right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we uh, and then Isaac, you know, these are the two brothers again. Isaac married Mary Woodford, had a gaggle of children. <laughs> she passed away. He remarried Mehitable Ensign, and they had only Jonathan. And that's it. This is the end of this family. 
So where you're seeing the Timothy and Daniel, these are the sons of this Timothy. So the left, Timothy 18. So now if we go in reverse, we go up to number mm. 18. He's the son mm -hmm. of John of Providence and Joanna Vincent of mm -hmm. Providence, Rhode Island. So it was an interesting system that the Reverend Henry O. Sheldon came up with. I've never seen anything like it anywhere else. Um, it was something he devised all on his own. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it, it kind of worked. I mean, I think for mid 19th century, no computers. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty um, incredible what he managed to do with it and how accurate he ended up being for yeah. the most part. There's a lot of mistakes, uh, you know, like we talked about, but it's in surprisingly accurate as well. Mm. Wow. The other weird thing about this, you'll see there's like, there's all these ones. This is page one, right? And then there's one R mm -hmm. and you'll see a two R. That's mm -hmm. for the R stands for right. This, the, the right hand page. Cause when you were looking at this as a book mm. and it was mm. open, this was the page on the left hand side. Mm. And the next page we can't see actually, do I have it up? Hold on one second. Um, I can bring it up better. If I go to the magazine here. So this is the same page. The next page would have been on the right hand side is oh, one also R. Okay. So Got both it. pages are numbered as one, one and one R. Two, two R. He doesn't put the R here because mm. there's no point but yeah. when was it when was this published dale 1855 mm. the first mm. volume was in 1855 um he, before they had formatting <laughs> yeah there's no formatting back then there's nothing yeah amazing and can you imagine they would have had to typeset all of this god how incredibly tedious that would have been Hmm. Uh, so I don't know how he managed it. I really don't. Um, and he continually, 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 continuously updated it as he, because this was a magazine. So what he would do is he would, um, he printed his first volume and then sold subscriptions to people, to Sheldon descendants and asked them to write in with what they knew of their families. And he built onto it and kept, um, you know, mm -hmm. kept going. So if you bought the subscription, then you were basically just pre-purchasing the next, you know, mm -hmm. the next volume mm -hmm. when he came out with more. Mm -hmm. Which I think points to his unusual numbering system that's still used by the SFA, which, right, you know, it, it, I mean, back in the day, it was okay, but it, I, I just personally, I prefer to do, you know, Isaac one, Isaac two, Thomas three, Thomas four, John mm -hmm. five, Chauncey six, you know, or whatever, whatever it is, because then you're just uh, giving the generation. So the Isaac one is first generation, then his son Isaac is Isaac two, and then mm -hmm. Thomas is three, and it makes yeah. Me do. Whereas I tend to go more by cities, like Isaac one was from Windsor, so Windsor, yeah. and his son lived in Northampton, so Isaac of Northampton. Um, sorry, you? somebody was asking something. Yeah, this is Sue, um, I thought that I heard that it was um, this final published edition was actually a draft, and it never. Yes. Yes. He okay. never. He never completed it. You're right. Um. I mean, this volume one was published in 1855. It was like it was published and sent out to places, but there were um, six volumes altogether. Um, the sixth volume was never published in his lifetime, but he had a draft of that one. And that was later transcribed and published by the Sheldon Family Association, by the SFA in the 1960s. Hmm. Um, 
because otherwise, th since there had been no publications of it, it was you, you get to the end of volume five and your ancestor has a number, but there's nothing to go to. So you're like, well, where did they go? Like, clearly he knew there's more. Why can I see it? And it was because it was in that last volume that he passed away before he could get it published. Um, and so there, it was just in a library somewhere, I guess. And then the SFA got a hold of that and and transcribed it and published it. So, um, so yeah, I think it was yeah in the '60s, the SFA republished all of these. Um, I think technically they don't have a copyright on them, but um, just to it doesn't really matter because uh, I'm we. We don't use those. We go back to this original one and kind of started from scratch, from fresh anyway, because we don't know, you know, for almost a century, the SFA was doing fantastic work, but we don't know where a lot of that information came from. There's not a lot of source documentation. So we have no real way of knowing what might be correct or not correct. So we're just starting from scratch and building um from the ground floor with all documentation and it's been going well so i think the first 20 i want to say the first 20 pages or so of the magazine are fully transcribed already um except for maybe some some of the daughters you know we wouldn't necessarily um that wouldn't have been a, a priority yet we want to transcribe everybody but trying to get you know the sheldon lines first um, and so that's what we're, we're working on. Uh, should I show now? We could go back to the line that you were talking about, Kelly, the, um, yeah, it's, uh, well, C. yeah, yeah. Um, what I, am I, I, you know, I'm not confident yet that that's absolutely for certain, <clears throat> but I think that the George, w sheldon lieutenant george w sheldon who died at gettysburg was he it was definitely the son of william i believe and i think that william is shown in the tree and is the son of chauncey sheldon and then that goes back john thomas thomas isaac isaac so i don't know isaac isaac you're... okay so this is one isaac so then i um Isaac Isaac and then it goes Thomas so it's there's Isaac Isaac then Thomas there is no Thomas no it's the other Isaac the Isaac two to Isaac <laughs> okay so sibling this Thomas then yes. okay so Thomas there's no Thomas there either oh no here it is Thomas is. okay uh and then John of Suffield you said so this John oh no this John died as a child this John down here yeah okay so we were good so far then chauncey i don't Wait see a chauncey uh maybe let's see i have okay i'm so i'm looking for a john 1724 to 1808 um of suffield connecticut yeah that's him okay and there's no chauncey under him wonder if I skipped a step here somewhere. Okay, go into your, go into the tree and look up Chauncey because that's where I thought. I'm that. on the tree. This is our tree that we're looking at. Oh, look at Chauncey. Yeah. Well, but which there are several Chaunceys. Yeah. And maybe I got it wrong here. <clears throat> 1786 about is where he was. You were in there before. I remember. 1782. Um, I have. Yeah, uh, could be. To he's from Rupert. Okay, and who did he marry? They don't uh, know. no idea. He's a okay, doctor that's from not Warsaw. The one I was looking at. So I maybe I be may, maybe messed up, and um, this is a line for like I said, I just was trying to put it together. Well, it may be. Let's look at um, he was number sixteen sixty four. So if okay. we go to the magazine and we scroll down a lot. Oh, 
a lot, a lot. Almost there. 1664. Chauncey L. Then he's on page. I need to zoom in. I can't read that. Is that 42? So let's go to page 42. Come on. I don't even know if I'm on page 42. I'm just waiting for something to load to see where I'm at. Hmm. My computer's having a little bit of a hiccup, it looks like. Come on. Well, as soon as this loads, as, what I can do is try to find him and see in the magazine who he had listed for that person's wife and yeah, children. Yeah, it was in your, um, let me see. I'm going to look. Oh, wait. Something was just starting to come up. Page 56. I went too far. No, oh, page 42. Oh, here, while we're, while that's loading, you'll see, here's like, here's volume yeah. two, it was published in January of 57, volume three was published in April of 57, so. Mm. Page 42. Actually, it's not the Chauncey L. It's just the Sh Sh Chauncey, son of John and Lucy Whiting. I'm over in the, our, our um, TNG tree. Okay, so this Chauncey. <clears throat> um do you see the William there? William 1813. Yeah. So you think this I, is the father of George? I think so. He on the census he's a, born about 1816. Um and since that doesn't look like a firm date to me, I think that might be Well, except that this William went to Oregon. According That's to what this, it says or what you know, was it somebody said, Well, yeah, he went out to Oregon, he went out west, or whatever. I don't that know that could be. I mean, he could have come back too. Um, but I mean, this was the generation of Henry O. Sheldon. Matter of fact, Henry was born is older, he's born in 1799, so this was contemporary to him. So the information tends to be more, uh, fairly more. accurate, yeah, yeah. So I may be on a wild goose chase and need to. To, but it's uh, it's worthy to yeah it's worthy to check. In the meantime, let's we can still use this as an example, and move to show you guys how to input this stuff into. Can I can I ask you to go? <clears throat> maybe it's hard to page twenty seven where Gardner Sheldon is, so that you can see um, because he got marked as a one over two as far as issue, and that threw me when I saw that. It's on page twenty seven. Yeah, let me open a fresh one so I don't lose where I was on um okay. the other that guy. Was a little, that was a little quirky. Page 27. Oh, one over two as in a half? Yes. As okay. you know, yeah, yeah which, which kind of like threw me when I saw that. I didn't understand. Yeah, I can explain that. Um, you did at one time, but I've completely forgotten what it meant. Just notations of the age, right? Or that he invented. It was, um, it had to do with his numbering system. 
So right. what page did you say again it was? 20 what? Seven. I'm still a bit off here. Okay. And actually, let me see if there's any on here. There's not a lot of those. No, there's not on that page. Okay. 24, 25, 26. It should be right around here. Okay. There you go. Okay. And you said gardener? Gardener. Gard gardener's the child? Yes. It's on, I think it was on, I looked at it, it was page 27. Well, that's weird. No, I, that might be it right there. I thought I saw Nua. Right there. Yes, that's there. What, that's the one, 27. Yeah. At the, you see there, he's like the second to last listed on under Isaac. In, in the, yeah, right there. Oh, here. Gotcha. Yeah, Sorry. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what was happening was um, he would leave. Let me see if I can find an example. He would leave space sometimes in some places. Um, oh. You can't really find it here. Like and he when ran he out was. Of room. He ran out of room. Yeah. Yeah. Like here's a child where they don't know the name of the child. So, he, but there's a D, which means that they died. So this child died young. Um, but so the, where, where did Gardner go again? Did I miss him again? Next page. Yeah. You're on next page. page. Oh, here. Yeah. Page. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So in his original draft of this, um, he didn't he this means that he wouldn't have had Gardner originally. Ah. And and then in his earlier drafts, and then he realized he messed up. Maybe he always knew about Gardner, but he just, you know, clerical error, he forgot to include him here, something like right. that. He can't just change his entire numbering. Yeah. Right? All right. of these people would have to Get a new number. down a number which would then change everyone else mm -hmm. as well so instead of changing all that he just made gardner number 26 60 and a half oh i see okay right and that's your sheldon is it that's my guy yeah yeah because yeah. i have family not on the sheldon side but on my halls in uh, Middlebury, Wyoming County, New York. Oh yeah, I mean we were we we were all very much in that in Wyoming County, um, mm -hmm. Genesee in Wyoming County. All right, now on the notations on the right, there's some about their deaths, some about their marriages. What you know when it's in residence mm -hmm. or or death location in italics. In generally, in every case, the it's the the italic is going to be um, their last place of residence, which is usually going to be their death, but not not okay. necessarily their death. OK. All right. But it's going to be their primary place of residence. Yep. Got it. Um, as an adult and like at the end of their life, if they were an older right. person. Um, and that's for for the sons. That's usually all that's listed um, ah, they okay. if there was something interesting there might be some extra notation but that's usually it he's just trying to say okay isaac what he ended up in cherry valley because then you know think back then and even now sometimes when people will say oh you're the you're the the shelton the sheldons of hampton or you're the sheldons of mm -hmm. you know whatever the town is mm -hmm. when they're talking about the sheldons of cherry valley they're this is isaac Right. Mm -hmm. um, look, at the there. look at the two there that died at sea. Yeah, three of them. Oh, the, Jeremiah oh, the also died, died at, oh, sea at sea fever. of yellow fever. And the two, we don't know what they died of, but they died at sea. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was putting this family in for Sissy, I was curious about those three. Uh, I think I tried searching them up, um, but I didn't have a lot of time. But I'm curious to find out more about who I, I think they were. That I looked a little bit more and um that at sea did not apply to all of them i'm i'm thinking that i that i drilled down on on them in fact i know it didn't because um wait a minute so uh we got um we got 
Uh, let's see who's listed there. Uh, Benjamin. All right, hold on. Augustus. So um, some of these guys ended up Jeremiah. Is it Jeremiah and Benjamin that said they died at sea? And Asa. All right. Oh, and Asa. All right, hold on. Jeremiah. Let me see if I learned any. Oh, well, maybe... Augustus is not a guy because he married a Mr. Dolly. So that would be a daughter. It's probably Augusta, and it's just a oh, mistake. Okay, now, okay, for Asa, I have died in Chenango County, 24 September, 1856. Without I mean, running. we would want to double check and just make sure, because Asa was an, not an uncommon name. So we may just want to make sure that that's not a different Asa. Yeah, 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 true. All but, right, well, well, or I, it could be where he died at sea, but was recovered. Like if he died oh, of... Yeah, illness sure. on the ship his body might have been brought back right so i have augustus as marrying an elsie dolly d-a-w-l-e-y oh an elsie dolly so maybe Elsie's. it is so normally the all the men just have the place here and yeah. the daughters have the um the husband usually yeah. Yeah, they don't no, usually I, put wives on this list i've got it as as uh dolly i mean as okay female. so elsie as a, a miss dolly elsie dolly elsie dolly yeah yeah, yeah. anyway uh, i did find what looks like neua here Nua or something yeah yeah i i managed i found her um with because her husband had this fantastic gamerleal name Isn't gamerleal that a great, parker these are fabulous. Yeah. So Gamer G Gamerleal is the first name. Gamerleal. Right. Gamerleal is the first name. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Um, but I found there, um, but her name was a little bit different. Let me see if we go back and find it. Um, well, they, there's a nickname for it. Okay. What I learned for Renew for New for Renewa or whatever her name was Nua. There's there's a nickname. Oh yeah, here it is. I found it. So his name was Gamaliel Parker the Third. Okay. And his wife, her, so really, her name was renewed. Renewed. renewed so, yeah. so Nua was um, like the nickname. nickname. So the Reverend put her nickname in the magazine, but uh, uh, researching her, we found her name was really renewed, which is a um, a Puritan name. We've talked about Puritan names in past oh. things, you know, where the name was a, a virtue of something. Mm -hmm. So she would have been renewed as a child of God type of idea. Got it. Got it. Hmm. That's lovely. I mean, to put yourself in their, in their time frame. Yeah. Yeah. You, see, you can see. Oh, so let's look at the formatting a little bit while we're here. So, mm -hmm. um, because this is a good example. Um, we don't have a specific birth information for her, uh, but I've put some notes here about her name, right? So we found renewed where she's Nua in the magazine. Um, moved to Ripley in about 1826, according to the 1859 55 New York census. She states she had been living in the town for 29 years. So I put a residency note. And why don't I have the 1855 census? Oh, I do. So let me fix this because what I need to do is then mark that as um, the source for that. Okay. So we put a, a residence uh, event um, with the place. And this is the my note then describes why it's here. This was the year that she came to Ripley, New York. Then we have her in census records. So all the census records are attached. Um, I put the exact date that is on the actual record, but we should also be aware that census takers were not consistent. So when mm -hmm. they're asking the person about, you know, the family that they're talking to right now, mm -hmm. um, they would sometimes put the information based on the actual day that they were talking to them. But oh. that that was not what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to put the family 
based on a particular day. Uh, each census was a little bit different, but it was often June the 1st of, mm. of the year, right? I can't remember mm. 1850. It might have been July 1st that year. I can't recall. But um, and the reason for that, they were trying to make, you know, the entire country consistent. You know, who was here on this specific day? But right. they didn't always pay attention to that. And because they didn't always pay attention to that, you'll sometimes get people that are completely missing from census records because an enumerator went through the town um, mm. in one town. Uh, someone then moves to that town and then after they moved the enumerator for their old town then goes through so they got missed on both ends mm. or the opposite happens and they get recorded twice in two totally different towns two weeks apart from each other because they've moved in between and I actually have a family in the 1850 1850 census or maybe it was 1860 no 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 it was 1850 census I have him in three different yeah. census records. One in, I want to say it was Ohio, it was the first one. Then one a week later in Indiana, <laughs> because he had they were moving and they stopped at a boarding house, and they got recorded while they were there. And um, and then in California, um, a couple of weeks after that. Um, so they got wow. recorded in all three and I know it's them because they have weird names uh, the son one of their sons was named um, Epaphroditus and another was Ransom and thankfully you know they have these bizarre names <laughs> rather I might not have been able to confirm it was actually the same family I like Eponidas myself yeah that's a good one yeah <laughs> Uh, so the formatting, we put the exact day, we put month, uh, or sorry, day, month, year with month in um, letters and only three letters. So this is the formatting that we use across the board, which is the European formatting. Um, places are always the town or city, county, um, okay. state, and country divided by commas. This is really important because then TNG um, maps that out for us. Yeah. Could you zoom in on that a little bit so we can see it better? I, what do you mean when you say TNG? TNG is our uh, tree on the website. That's the name of. Oh, okay. Got it. The pro okay. This is TNG. This is the program that okay. we use. Yes, Sorry, I just yeah. missed that. that, what that okay. um, I don't know how to zoom in on here, Sue. I'm sorry. Oh, um, control, control plus on a PC. Control plus. Let me try. Do I even have a plus on here? Let me try this. Let me try if I go. <laughs> like, oh, that that worked. Okay, is that better? Yes. Much yeah. Better. Okay. Um. Okay. I'm gonna have to just remember to. Do control, okay. Control minus takes you back to the. Way yeah. you well, I don't it. have even the plus or the minus. Um. I mean, they must be on my keyboard somewhere. But I used my mouse. But anyway, it's fine. Uh, I can get it. So the yeah, the month, or sorry, the day, the month, the year, town, county, state, country, um, divided by commas. Um, then for census records or what? So the residence is. This is a great one to use just as a default if you need to. Um, when you're adding a census record, Ancestry automatically uses this already. But then I go back and I put in these notes. I delete whatever Ancestry put in because it doesn't usually make much sense and it's kind of useless infor information. And then I type in a census because that's what it was. I put the name as it was actually written on the document itself um, in quotes because then we could see, like say she had gone by um, Nuva and this one, we could see how she went by different names over time. Our name would change and use different uh, nicknames and stuff. Um, age, I don't, oh, I've noticed I've used different formatting here, but usually what I do is just do a comma and the age. We've just fixed both of these so they're consistent. And it's like, if it's not perfect, it's fine because it'll just, you know, we can 
always fix them. It's not that big of a deal. The other um, thing, mm -hmm. um, Dale, to know is when you're looking at these people, you got to look at all the siblings because they can all like, like they all left Rhode Island and went to, uh, yeah. you know, Wyoming County and Shenango County and, you know, they were all Otsego County. They were all up there together. Even the Carpenters, their mother's family was there. Yeah. So you can often find things by looking in the siblings or, you know, that involve the person you're at, you're looking for. Siblings or even families that were in the town of origin, they tend to travel together. So mm. if, as you said, if it was the Sheldons and the Carpenters and the uh, Sullivans, uh, you might, if you can't find your one, but you know we should be there, you can look for the Carpenters and the Sullivans mm. someplace else because they tend to do that. My so my great grandparents mm -hmm. got got um on a census one year um because they were on vacation up in Massachusetts and that they happened to be like you know on family vacation at the time the census the enumerator came through yeah let me check something real quick here Gamaliel okay yeah so uh, just going back to the format a little bit so it's the the name in quotes so we can see how the name changes in this case it was the same on all three of these the age um and then it, this, there's no format after this it's whatever seems um interesting interesting or something of note to put after that so i'm just putting she's born in rhode island she's with her husband gamliel i do usually always put um who that person is living with like with parents with husband with husband and children with husband children and and three domestic servants, you know, whatever it is. I'm trying to just get an so idea of what, what the household is like. So the so, next one, you're noting mm -hmm. that there's a difference in the age lived at that location between her and her husband. So her husband, it appears, came out there first. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. It notes on because this is a state census. It's a little bit different. And they had different information. They noted that she had been living in this town of Ripley for 29 years, but her husband was noted as living there for 33 years. And that's a interesting, significant difference. So I included that in the notes. I'm also I'm only the notes here are only what's or are usually what's only related to this person or what's on their specific line so i put this in brackets because it's you know it's showing the difference between her and her husband but this and the reason why i scrolled up for a second because i noticed i put here housekeeper 2000 in real estate 800 in personal property seeing that i immediately thought oh she must be a widow at this point because usually it's only the head of household um where they show how much money they had um, and, mm. and sometimes the occupation, like women might've shown as an occupation, but it was usually just, it was either blank or was keeping, keeping, house. House. keeping yeah. house. Yeah. So instead to show housekeeper and to have all this, I thought, oh wait, was, had Gamaliel died. So I scrolled up real quick and he had in 1856. So here's something really interesting. These names um, that came through the children of Isaac and Esther Carpenter, they they repeat themselves in Esther Carpenter's siblings. She has a gardener carpenter. Mm. She mm. has a renewed carpenter. She has an Asa carpenter. So there's, you know, she had siblings with that they re, that re, they repeated those names in, you know, the naming of their of of Esther and Isaac's children. So you're talking about this couple here. So yeah, yeah. So, I mean, renewed so these children. Renewed. Yeah, yeah. They, she had. There was, you know, there were there were aunts and uncles with those names on their mother's side. On the mother's which, side, yeah. Which is so interesting, right? And then Abigail on the father's side. So you know. Yeah, they, I mean that, that was common. Yeah, you would usually common, name after right? your parents and grandparents, and then after you know brothers and sisters and those names just kept repeating over and over again which makes it harder sometimes yeah. 
right. and the gardener yeah. the gardener it could be a surname because i have gardeners yeah. yeah i think it probably was in uh in rhode island yeah yeah and renewed is probably we don't see that name in the sheldon so it makes sense that it came through the carpenters but that's an old that's a puritan name that's a 17th century mm -hmm. name so i bet if you go back further if not the car esther's mother father's family then it's going to be mm -hmm. her mother's family there's going to be other renewed's back there because mm -hmm. that didn't yeah, that pop up out of nowhere yeah her at, father in in this period it, it's an older name than that oh well, this is interesting her father was jeremiah his mother was renewed smith mary daniel oh, see, there you go so there it is right there that makes yep. sense Fascinating. so you and i you and i are related on those carpenters as well i think we're very related i i think we are <laughs> yeah i think we found already a few different yeah matches yeah um so yeah well, i mean when you're doing your you know your personal tree i'd yeah i would recommend researching the wives families we don't um let me see if i have it for esther i don't i what i will do is if um so our tree is only people that actually have the name sheldon or right. their parents spouses or children mm -hmm. so the wife like we're not going to include her parents um, right. Well, actually, we did in this case because her mother was a was Sheldon. Because her mother was a Sheldon, right? Yeah. Yes, right. So actually, we did. Normally, we wouldn't include them here. And then what I would do instead is I would put them here. I'd put her as daughter of Jeremiah Carpenter and Abigail Smith, ah, or whatever their names are. Okay. So at least we have them, right. but they're not here because then it, it starts confusing. Yeah, sure. The database, the database yeah. gets out of control. Yeah, no, it's right. Mine is out yeah. of control, personal. Yeah. Well, um, if Mark's back mm -hmm. in that area as well, we probably are all related uh, uh, on other and lines. Probably in multiple lines, yeah. 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 So I, I just got involved in a project called um, uh, Passenger to Patriot. It's a Mayflower project, which I just inserted Isaac in because through that line, um, it goes back to the Carpenters and the Wilcoxes and the Earls and the Cooks and the, you know, like seven Mayflower passengers to go right into Isaac Sheldon. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So Dale, so, if I want to get on this, I'm going to have to, you're going to have to, how are you going to get me on there? Are yeah, yeah, I can. Um, do you have a, well, we're on Facebook, right? If you can send me uh, a private message on Facebook with okay. either your ancestry username or um, an email address or however you want to do it, I can send you an invite to this tree specifically. Okay. All right. And then what happens then is you'll be, you'll have trees up here. So if I click on that, I get something what looks like this. This is my list of my trees. Um, but then go to trees shared with me. And these are all the trees that have been shared with me. And you'll see one called sheldongenealogy.org tree. Um, and then these are ones that I've created either for myself or friends or clients because I've had a few professional ones that I've done. Um, so I've got a, three pages of them down here. Um, oh, yeah, my so butt's getting sore. I can't sit this long. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> About, about yeah. I gotta go up and stretch, man. I can't take it. No problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a long thing. We, yeah, we usually stop about now. I didn't um show how to uh add one, but we can we have the whole yeah. month is the Sheldon magazine, so we could do that next week. This has really been fascinating. Yeah, this that's been a you know our best meeting in a long time, actually. I think. Um I'm learning a lot. Like I said, I just started on this. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. What you all know. I'm just. Don't worry. Yeah. As much as you want to get into it or not, we're we're happy to to help. And you, it doesn't if you have questions about genealogy that aren't necessarily Sheldon related, don't uh -huh. feel free to ask. We're we're happy to help and answer questions. And um... yeah, I just looked up that uh, Y37 marker on family tree or whatever yeah uh -huh. yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do that cool um, so 
Yeah, it's I, I. I'm not having any more kids, and my son, he had two daughters. He's not having any more, and that's the end of the line there. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, you daughtered out. Daughtered yeah. out. I got yeah. four <laughs> granddaughters, no grandsons. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have that in multiple of my, actually my Sheldon line, that particular branch daughtered out as well. Uh, yeah, my, I'm my dad's uh, only child and I have only one son and I don't know if he's going to have kids or not. So we'll, we'll. Yeah, keep... I have the same on my dad's side of the family. My nephew is the last male and he only has a daughter. And yeah. Probably... yeah, that's so uh, sucks. We got to record all this so it's not lost. <laughs> but that's why it's even more important, actually, that you do take that test. That's fantastic because then your branch um, is recorded. is uh, is recorded. Yeah. Well, you know, um, my brother was the last one on my father. Right. You know, he was the only son, and then he passed away. My brother had a daughter, so. That's yeah. why you know, I, I think so many um, families, I mean, there's even, I think in England and Neil might, might know, there's something where it shows all these surnames that are no longer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of them are very cool, too. Yeah. Yeah. So is this I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not aware of any particular websites of names. Ah. Of I, I, you know what? I'll go look and see if I can find something. There's some lists online, yeah. Yeah. Of um, so, surnames that have died out. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. So the Y37, it's the same as the, you just spit in a tube or something? It's the same. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, uh, I think, I think, uh, I, I don't know. Or is it a swab one? I forget. Now. Well, it used to be a swab, but I don't know whether it's a swab or the spit. The swab's easier, so. Okay. Um, Y37 is still a swab at the moment. Is it? Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's been a great meeting. Did anyone else have anything? Uh, we're getting um, two yeah, o'clock in just um, a minute. Peter Sheldon from Plymouth has Y DNA oh, right. since came out. Um he apparently is from the Derbyshire A1 group. Indeed. Now Great. I've actually I've actually managed to talk him through putting some extra information in. Oh, so he's got, he's got his earliest ancestor of George Sheldon, seventeen eighty nine. He's Great. put in his country of United Kingdom. Okay. Um, but his results. Uh, so he's descendant of John Eight of Providence. Um, he's a descendant of John Eight. No, he's connected with the John Eight. He's that group. Okay, yeah, which would make sense from the Darby Sheldons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm pretty... Go ahead. How he connects to him, well. Yeah, that's the hard part, isn't it? Yeah, figuring that out. Yep. Oh, Kelly just put the That's just link. one, but I've seen it elsewhere. Um, that's just one I come up with. Oh, they also have it on the uh, UK family tree. Eight rare surnames, which could be soon be extinct. Uh, but that's let's see. Oh yeah, you know, endangered I to, names. I need to chow chow for you guys. Okay, yeah, we'll see more. everybody next okay. week. But I think you can Google the extinct surnames and come up with some stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I'll right. see you all next week. And um, thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, Dale. Just, just I... for, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Just, just very quickly, going back uh, to Peter Sheldon's DNA yes. results. You know, what else can we tell him? Um, let me look. I did. Did I? I can't remember if I sent it. I thought I sent it to him directly, but I don't know. Well, he's from Plymouth, and he's tra he's traced back. 
everything he's traced back has also been in the Plymouth area, right? Yeah. So we can at least tell him that his ancestors before that were from the Darby area. So, I mean, how to figure out how they went from Darby to all the way down to Plymouth would be very interesting. You know, we, we don't know if it was by land or by sea, but. I put him in A1, but he could just as easily be in. A2. Actually, I probably put him in A3 because those are the ones that remained in England. So let me do that. I'm going to do that right now. Um, and we can't really get more until more people take the big Y in a, more people in England take the big Y. Um, I don't think we'll be able to pinpoint it much further. Then at least that it's, it's getting people to part with over a hundred pounds. Yeah. I know it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's so hard. that's why, you know, we try to fund, you know, the English tests as much yeah. as we can, but those, um, just because there's so few have tested there. Okay. I'm going to tell you something in a second here. Um, Neil, let's see. Okay, so I moved. I just moved. Were you trying to get it on that computer? <sighs> okay, I'll try and put it in that folder for you. Well, I sent it to each other, Sheldon. Yeah, but it comes to this. Because all the emails come to this. Are you silent on there? No, I'll. You want it? You want that PDF? In, uh, um, okay. He's the only Plymouth person, though, right? That's tested so far. Yes. Yes, and just eyeballing it, um, he, you know, I mean, the the closest you could match him up with with various different ones, but um, at the CDY markers, he has a thirty two thirty six. Um, which also a Mr. Nightingale has, which is, I've got him in group A2, but he could easily be somewhere else. But also uh, the John Trevor Sheldon has a 32 and 36 at the CDY markers. That could be coincidence or there could be something there. It's hard to say. Um, John Trevor Sheldon. Yeah, and he has, he has William um as his um ancestor so um i don't know i mean unless unless another one i mean we've got jeffrey um who's tested over there to the big y um, mm -hmm. but but i guess i don't know you almost need one other tester in that group and then that might help you identify a couple of yeah. steps that then you could um, request at YCQ. And then, you know, then they only have to part with 25 um, bucks or pounds um, to test branches. But it, I mean, it's just an arduous process and an expensive one. Yeah. Someday it may be cheaper. Don't know. No. Oh. Christina, hi. You've been quiet, but I thought I'd say hi. Hi. Hey. Hey. And Carol's been fairly quiet, but yeah. yeah. Well, she talked a little bit. Yep. Um, did that answer your question, Neil? I'm sorry. Uh, partly. We know he's from Derbyshire, but that's... yeah, yeah. I think that's all we got. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. I mean, I don't know how how we can go about bridging the gap between the record that Barnard has of some of the early branches of Darby sketched out and then mm -hmm. how it breaks up into these different bits because we have Jeff being more Jeff from 
England being more closely associated with this group than um than with that group mm -hmm. that are all part of the Derby group. Yeah. So teasing and then our John, part. even in the colonies, John of Providence was more distantly connected than the Godfrey. Yes. Line. Like we know they're related, but it has to be further back, like maybe even another century. And yeah. we don't know. Yeah. Where? So um yeah, it's 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 a bit problematic. I mean, if if you do traditional research and you know when they first show up in Plymouth and you go back to the same time period back in Derby and whether you can bridge that gap or not, I don't know. You know, I think it's maybe we have to look for as early in the Plymouth area look for the earliest Sheldon records we can find and try yeah. pushing them together and see if any of them reference Darby at all, you know, like a, a will where there was, which, I mean, the, 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 the Darby Sheldons weren't very affluent for the most part, except for that one branch that went down to Rowley Regis. Um, they, you know, they didn't necessarily leave wills. So but you know, who knows? Maybe we could find some sort of reference back. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I think I think a lot of this stuff is just long term, and mm -hmm. and um, we might get lucky with a church register, like we did with that Isaac in Manchester. How yeah, that was just so that was, perfect. Yeah, Isaac, that was just, son of <laughs> well, son I, of I Roger just, of Harvey. It was like, oh my god. <laughs> I just periodically, because Isaac is our stumbling block and is yeah. a, a somewhat unusual name in that time frame, I'll just go in every now and then and do a random search. And I did that and I came up with that record that was new to Ancestry that led to all the other records that yeah. solved that problem. So um, that's why, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, keep a research register and be systematic about everything and do everything by the book and cross all your T's and dot all your I's. And I've actually been just as successful, if not more, by my ridiculously repetitive scattershot approach to things. Because let's say you go and you visit the, um, you know, the history of Windsor, Connecticut. And at the time that you were first reading it to look for something, you didn't you didn't know what you do now. So the fact that you revisit that same book mm -hmm. you know, 20 years later, you find things or you're able to put together things that you didn't have the information to put forward the first time. Well, if you'd kept a register and it said, oh, you've already looked at that book, then you wouldn't necessarily go back and look at it. So looking at something a second or a third time or visiting a place more than once. It's not a problem. Yeah. It's not a problem. It's a good thing, I think. Yeah, I agree. Matter of fact, I sometimes I'll completely I don't wipe my tree, but it's like once a decade, I just start from scratch completely over again. Yeah, I mean it's every source over again. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good to do. All right, guys. Great session. And um what our goal is is to get the video um interview of george which will have the on-site some of the on-site stuff and then um uh, a sit-down interview um put together for the anniversary and and have that for um next month for the civil war the anniversary of uh of the civil war um, anyway battle perfect okay all right. Thank you, everybody. We will shut down and I'll see you next week. Sounds good. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye